What's up, everybody? Uh, March. Welcome to my new digital talk show and podcast, Just Call Me, all things surrounding sports and pop culture. Stepping out of my WNBA box to start the conversation with you guys. Um, I have this week out. A lot has happened in the last seven days, and it's been a really great seven days, especially for women's basketball. Um, my timeline has been completely filled with all things women's tournament, and it's been just giving me so much life, and it's been making me so excited about the tournament, about the girls playing, the girls about to get drafted, and all that. Speaking of the draft, um, I did see some WBA news. We, you know, in a while since like October, we've seen, oh no, probably around free agency time since we've seen really any real WNBA news. Um, apparently, we're getting new jerseys. And I'm, I feel like that's something that I should have known being a part of the WNBA, but um, I was just as surprised as everybody else. So, Christina Williams with a uh, Girls Talk Sports TV, of course, broke the news like she always does, um, named it WNBA Jersey Gate. Um, people were seeing the jerseys popping up at Dick's Sporting Goods, and some of them are nice, some of them not so nice. Um, but the important thing is that we're getting new jerseys, y'all. Uh, everybody has their own unique design. They got rid of the big ass sponsorship logos. Um, on the front of our jerseys, which is like really exciting because I actually hate those like so much. I hate those jerseys and um, no shade, Nike, I'm very grateful, but I hate them. Um, I think they're bringing white jerseys. You know, I'm here for all of that. Um, that's what that like everybody was about having the jerseys available in stores. And I think that more stores need to do a better job of making WNBA jerseys and merchandise and gear and socks and shirts and hoodies more available to everybody because people want that stuff. And when you make it available, people were leaving us just to see jerseys for sale in the dicks. And I think that they're not even being allowed to be sold right now. So that's kind of weird. I don't, I'm really sure what, if it was an accident um if they were doing like a social experiment to see if we deserve new jerseys if people would buy the new jerseys i mean if it was the second then i'm like what do we do to deserve that just give us the jerseys without having to test the waters just give them to us um but it was a very positive response which is good and i hope that that's the response that you know nike and dix and all that wanted to see from WNBA fans so i'm excited the new jerseys. I asked my teammate Rachel Bantam if she's seen the new jerseys yet because in um, Minnesota right now and she said she did see them and she loves them and they're super nice so I can't wait to see them and I cannot wait for you guys to see them. Also another thing that was really exciting in the WNBA world was um, I saw two two commercials. Uh, a door commercial with Shanae Gumake, which was a really, really cute commercial. It was on TV. It was a national commercial. I loved it. She looked great. She did amazing. Um, and then I've also seen Sue Bird, a lot of Cox commercials. And the most recent one I saw was she was in the commercial with Steph Curry. And it was really funny. And I'm not going to like explain the whole commercial, but you guys should definitely try and go see it. Um, but it was really cool to see an NBA player and a WNBA player in the same commercial. And I think that a lot of NBA players can definitely utilize, um, they can definitely utilize their, who they are um, to get more WNBA players in their commercials and their brand deals and endorsements and all that stuff. I mean, they're the ones sitting at the table right now. I mean, we, we get in there, we get to the table, we get in there, people trying to kick us down, but we still gonna try. Um, but. I think that it was really amazing to see Steph Curry and Sue Bird in a, in a CarMax commercial together. And it was really funny um, and I loved it. So yeah, um, I just see a lot of excitement surrounding the WNBA. Um, and wait, I'm done officially in. It's less than a month away This of our, from our training camp. Um, I think I have to be in Minnesota in three weeks. So it's coming y'all, so it's coming y'all. I'm hoping that we can, 
you know, build on the, the momentum that the tournament has built for us and have a really, really great season. So I'm really, really excited. Um, so I'm going to, we have minutes with guests on. So I'm going to um, intro him a little bit, but also talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to start this new little section called Netflix and Chill. And I'm going to put y'all on to uh, some Netflix shows, things that um, I've been watching on Netflix. And I'm really sorry about my connection being so bad, y'all. I'm in a hotel in Fort Lauderdale. So you know how that hotel Wi-Fi is. So I'm really... Really, really sorry. I hope I can fix that for the next episode because last week it was it was a little struggle. This week is the same. I'm hoping you guys would this last week got fixed. Okay. Anyway, the show that I just finished watching was Last Chance You. So I have been a huge fan of Last Chance You, and um, I'm not sure how many seasons there's been, but they've all been about football. And I don't really know too much about football, um, but I loved Last Chance You. I loved the stories. I loved the coaches. I loved the culture of the show. And um, I've always wanted them to do a basketball version. So if you don't know what Last Chance You is, it's a show on Netflix. It's a documentary series. And it follows junior college um, athletes um, at different programs. So every every season was about a different program. I think one, one program had two seasons. So basically it's just following the kids, the coaches, things that they go through, all the stuff like that. And I love the show. And I'm like, dang, they should do a basketball one. They should really, really, really do a basketball one. And they finally did. And it just came out. And of course I watched it in like a week. Um, you know, I have a lot of free time. Uh, to watch Netflix show. So I decided to watch it and I loved it. I loved it so much. So the background of Last Chance U Basketball is um, a junior college in uh, Los Angeles. So the East LA Community College. Um, it's in the heart of uh, East Los Angeles. So it's completely different from the normal Last Chance U vibes, which is usually like some down South, middle of nowhere, 200 kids at the community college. Like it's completely different from the football last chance use. And I loved it and everything about it was amazing. The coach, John Mosley, um, was my favorite person in the whole show. He was incredible with those kids, even though a lot of them were, a, were pains in the ass, but you couldn't help but root for them and love them and all this other stuff. Um, they were super likable. It was a very likable uh, season. Um, but that Juco life, oh, I couldn't do it. But um, my guest, one who did do it. And it is my best friend since we've been 15 years old. And we went to high school in the same area. And he actually went to a Juco and had that kind of experience. So I wanted to bring him on uh, to talk about his experience being a junior college player, getting out of junior college, going to a, a you know a regular college after things that he went through, his experiences. I know he got some funny stories. So, Darius, are you ready? Are you here? That's Stop funny. moving around. Sit down, please. In my cup. <laughs> One second. All right. We're good. I was nervous to bring Darius on here. You said what? I was nervous to bring you on here because sometimes you don't know how to act. Oh, no. We good. We're already on the wrong foot. Sit I pray, down. I prayed I pray before I got on here, so we good. All right. This, listen, whatever you say, first of all, the people can see you, one. Oh, they can see me for real, home. Cut the light on. Yeah. They can see you, and everything that you say is on the internet. So we're here forever. All right, we good. <laughs> she got to censor me. <laughs> we good. good. I don't got to censor you. I just got to monitor. Yeah, <laughs> monitor you a bit. Okay. So Darius, how are you? What's going on, Alexis? I'm lovely. How are you? <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here on my show. Too man. Why okay, you so we're. For those who aren't really sure how the college, JUCO college pipeline works, break it down for them, you know, as simply as you can. Yeah, pretty much. Um, JUCO is, is just for um, 
guys who like basically didn't have the grades or I mean honestly in junior college you might you might run into anybody like a lot of teams consist of dudes that was that was really locals and and um just really came out to a tryout and they just have so happened to make a roster or you might have a guy who like for instance my freshman year I had a teammate I can't and mind you I graduated when I was 17 so I came in and I had teammates I had a teammate that was 27 I had a teammate that was 28 what <laughs> oh no yeah I'm a, like one of them he hadn't played basketball for probably like four or five years he came, came out he came out to one of our preseason uh like pickup like games or whatever and he showed out and he was on the team so you got a lot of guys like that but it's pretty much like that's why they call it last chance you is for guys had bad grades bad situations whatever the case may be and they they, they come and and they have two years to get their life together with their grades and and, and their game and hopefully move on to a four-year university whether it be naia d2 d1 everybody goal was clearly to go d1 but but yeah that's pretty much all it is is there not um like an age limit you know in college you think you have like a i don't think so um i mean i don't think a coach is just gonna let like a 30 year old well i don't I, hey i'm i'll never say nothing Anything can happen. <laughs> yeah that, that's what i'm saying i i literally had a teammate that was that was 27 and, and and i think he was like going on and i had another one that was going on like 28 and i was 17 i was a kid almost like jail <laughs> Not jail. <laughs> okay, so you you get to this JUCO and like first day of practice, and you know what was your initial reaction to the guys, y'all's locker room, your coach, all that. Um, well, really, it that was my first time being away from uh from home, so I was just excited about everything for real. Like my first day on campus, first day, first practice, I actually uh I was I was like. I was sleep nervous because I was like, yo, the intensity and like everybody, everybody was like so gritty. Like all my teammates was from the hood, like from the bottom, the trenches. Like they were all from up north. Like I, we were in Hans little old Hansville, Alabama, where the closest restaurant was probably McDonald's, probably like 10, uh, it was McDonald's across the street. But the next furthest restaurant was probably like 20 minutes down the road. That's a whole nother story. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like it was, it was real gritty. Like, I bust my whole face open, had a concussion first day of practice at uh at Juco. So that was yeah, that was my introduction for real. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Okay, so I saw an um last chance you. So I don't know you I know you didn't finish it all, but I ended up finishing it. But they were showing the guys in there um where they was living, and it was like four or five of them in like one apartment. Is that is that yeah. accurate how y'all was living? Hey, that's real life. Now, when I was, see, I went to two junior colleges. When I went to Wallace, that was the first one. We stayed in, uh, we stayed in, I, I called them cells. Again, it was like jail. A big box, concrete walls, concrete ceilings. AC might work, may or may not work. And it, and, uh, and, uh, it was two beds in there. And yeah, that, that was, that was, and and then the door, it, it was like a big metal door, so it would like shut and close like a like a dungeon door, literally like when you when you close it. So that's how it was my first year. My set when I when I went when I transferred and went to uh, the next junior college, I actually me and one of my teammates got an apartment, and our, our parents we had they had split the rent on it. Oh, they got a little cheap spot and they split the rent, but we had 12, 13 other teammates that lived in one house, and. They were literally like air mattresses on on the on the ground, like <laughs> like it was just yeah that was a living situation. That I, I mean I feel like in the I, I feel like in the go ahead. in the show they like they show you like how hard it is for them, but I feel like they glamorize it a little bit just because it's on Netflix and stuff. So like, did that make you feel some type of way? You guys being portrayed like they struggling, but like not really. Um, you like look at them like damn like I really know like they live in like way worse than what's being shown on TV. Um, I mean, it, it depending on where you going to school at, it might be a little different. So I can't really, I can't, I, I can only speak on what I saw. You know what I'm saying? I can't really say or or and what the the information they was given. 
but I can't really say how I speak on how they were living. I just know and and in the situations that I experienced and my friends, the people we talked to, like honestly over here in JUCOs, like in the uh southeastern region where we're at, like it's it's like basically desert. If you go to JUCO, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, like where I came around, you go to a school in one one in the middle of the forest and there's nothing around it. If you go to JUCO, like in Florida, I had opportunities to go in Florida. When I went on those visits, at like one, somewhere close to maybe university, uh, uh, like Florida State University, like had a lot of things to do, a lot of people. It just depends on, you know, where you go. But where I was, a lot of people don't make yeah, it. Yeah, it sounds like you was, at, you was at the school that was more like similar to the fo the football last year at schools. Yeah. So they yeah. were like kind of smaller and... Mm -hmm. I mean, you really got to lock in. I mean, I feel like you probably learned a lot about yourself while you was at the JUCOs. And I was just curious, like, what was one of the most important things you learned at your time at your time at the JUCO? Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> I thought about this question when you gave it to me too. <laughs> well, I gave it really little answer. I gave it to you thirty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> some of my some of my learn, man. Oh my god. Oh man. I learned uh hide all your sex when you got a roommate. That's the most important thing you learned? Yeah, man. Like, it gets crazy. Like that boy had an appetite. Goodness. Like we almost got into times. Um, all right, my I was hoping for a more. I was hoping for a more insightful answer, Darius. I really was something right. heartfelt, full, maybe inspiring. I mean, I it, it, I can't really narrow it down to one thing. I learned a lot of things for real, like it, because because going to JUCO, like like I ain't I didn't I didn't grow up like rough like and like just dirt poor and stuff. Like my people, like my people, like we weren't rich and we was comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So it was like. I mean, when I went, and they and they took care of me most of my life. So when I went JUCO, like I was really that was like the first time. I just I was on my own for real, for real. And and it really just it, it just builds character to be honest. And once I got to, once I got to universities, like I was, I was more like on. I went. I can't say more on point, but. Certain, certain. I will say, y'all. I will say, y'all. When Darius came back from that, from those JUCOs, he was a new man. <laughs> he, was a new, he was a new person. It's like it, it's like boot camp or military, whatever you want to put yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, really like you. I mean, you was like you said, you was fine before you went, but like Darius was at JUCO, I was at freaking Maryland. And Duke. We couldn't have had more opposite college basketball experiences, really. Um. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like in both situations, you learn a lot about yourself and yeah. about other people and what you want to do in the future. So after JUCO days, where did you end up going to school? I went to uh, Columbus State University. It's, it's a division two in uh, like Southern uh, Southern Georgia. It's part of like the Peach Belt Conference. And how was that experience compared to JUCO? Like, uh, me and, me and uh, one of my former teammates, Rudy, he, we always talk about it to this day, like, because we both came from JUCO. We really went there together. We made a decision, like, we committed the same day and everything. But um, he, uh, when we got there, like, first off, in both of our JUCOs we went to, we never had a cafeteria. We never had on food, uh, I mean, on campus food, but nothing like that. We always had to eat off campus and stuff like that. So when we got there and we had a cafeteria, me and him was like, Yo, this is this is a different life. Like we, we was happy about that alone. We was like, well, we could just swipe a card, just go get so way cheap. It was like, <laughs> we was like, this is how y'all living, for real. So that, and then we like we, just simple stuff. Like we had, our, we were the Cougars. It was a Cougar on top of every trash can around campus. We was like, yo, they really got money here, like, <laughs> like stuff like that, like, little stuff like that, like. Like it, it was just is is that different? Like JUCO is literally, like you gotta when you there, you really gotta lock in on on your craft and like do what you gotta do to make it out. Cause a lot of people quit, a lot of people just don't make it. It's just you gotta really do some soul searching. But it was kind of <laughs> yeah. um, all right. The last thing I'm gonna ask you or 
ask you to tell the people, like, if there's anybody listening or watching or in the future listens or watches and has an opportunity or the only opportunity they have is JUCO, what positive words do you have to say about having to possibly take that route to get to the next level? Man, just lock in and do what you got to do, man. Because when you go JUCO, like, it's literally nothing to do but get in the gym or find something retarded to do, like, my fault, stupid to do. Like, <laughs> like it's just, it's just, like. You're doing, so, you're doing so well. I'm very proud of you, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, hold on, where was I? My short-term memory is burnt. Your positive but, words about JUCO. I was get I was getting in the song. Uh, having to stay in the gym. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go, yeah, if you going, if you going JUCO, man, just lock in. Gotta do because it's easy to get right because it ain't. It's literally nothing to do. Like I don't seen like a lot of nonsense go down just because because it's people's bored. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you if you get a chance to go JUCO, like it's a two year school. School is easier there. Like I had straight A's. I never had straight A's a day in my life. Ever not here. I graduated with 1.6 GPA. Like I never had nothing close to straight A's. I had Y'all straight hear A's. that? Y'all hear what he graduated high school with? Say it 1. again. 1.6 GPA. Y'all, I don't care how good you are at anything sports related. Yeah. You are not going anywhere with a one. No shade, Darius. I'm glad that you got it together. But y'all aren't <laughs> doing nothing but freaking 1.6 GPA. I don't care if you freaking LeBron James. It's not gonna happen. So remember that. Okay, sorry, keep going. Cool. But yeah, just um just lock in and do what you gotta do, man, because you literally got two years and most freshmen well, depending on what level Juco you playing, like a lot of freshmen not getting playing time. Like we were we we were competing for a national championship my freshman year. Like we made it to Elite Eight and everything. And we won our conference. I wasn't seeing the floor that much. So my sophomore year I really had to make everything shape. Like so you have two years to get your life together. Just lock in, do your school work, stay in the gym, and you'll end up somewhere. It works. It works just like that. You don't got to pay for school or nothing. Okay. Yeah, look at you. And now what? Now what are you doing? You getting another degree, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm getting, I'm getting my, my master's right now. I'm working on it. Sports management. Man. Oh my gosh. Y'all hear that? See, Juco is to say business and everything. Always. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, um, That's good. It took a lot of time to think. But I'm very, very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. I'm prouder of you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for coming on, sharing your Juco experience. I love you. Sure. And I'll text you later. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that is my best friend ever. Like, we've been through so, 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 so much together. Um, but yeah, like he was saying, like, we couldn't have had more opposite experiences. High school, I was a straight A student. Clearly he wasn't, but you know, he's he's gotten it together, y'all. I mean, I think Last Chance U has really put a positive light on uh, the JUCO route, you know, it might not always lead to a professional athletic career, but you could definitely use that to turn your life around and get your shit together. So I love that for him and I'm, and I'm so proud of him. So we're gonna switch gears now to a little bit of pop culture. I know you guys probably are waiting for the NCAA Women's Tournament talk, but we are gonna save that till after this. Um, so a lot of stuff happened this week that out to me. Um, first, we're gonna talk about uh, guests or a big company stealing shit from little companies, little small black owned businesses to be more specific. Um, I know you guys have probably heard of the Telfar bags. They are super exclusive, super cute, very, very, very hard to get a hold of. I have not been able to get one by the way. So very iconic, very iconic logo. And guests decided that they wanted to just steal it steal the whole logo, the, the whole entire thing, basically, and put it in their store. So um, I'm tired of big businesses doing that. A lot of clothing companies do it. A lot of designers do it. They steal, they steal ideas from smaller uh, creatives 
and put it in their stores and then make all money. And it'd be really, really annoying. But you know, once Twitter got a hold of that, I think I think the bags were in the stores for 18 hours and online. You know, um, Twitter, Twitter is updated bullying big corporations and businesses. It's actually hilarious how how we have at our fingertips on Twitter. So um, we not only embarrassed them because the bags were ugly as hell, but we got them to take the bags out of the stores and off the internet because that was not the right thing to do. And a lot of people like to steal ideas so easy. You know, internet, everything's posted, everything's online. So it's very, very easy to steal things. So that leads me to my next topic. Um, I don't really watch Jimmy Fallon. I like, I personally enjoy Jimmy Fallon when I do see him on TV or on um, Twitter and his little clips. But um, he brought a TikToker on his show um, to do TikTok dances. So I'm not sure the age range is right now, but um, I love TikTok. And when TikTok first started, it was like all about the dancing and the dances or whatever. And um, I know that a lot of the dances that are super popular have been created by like little and black kids that just love to dance and they just decided to put it on TikTok and people just steal them, remake them. I and that's what TikTok is about, it's fun. But people got a hold of TikTok. Obviously, now it's this big money machine and you have sponsorships and everything. So one of the biggest names on TikTok is Addison Rae. And she has she's a TikTok OG. I can respect her hustle because she was probably one of the most members of TikTok. And fast forward a year, and now she hangs out with the Kardashians and is being brought on to the Jimmy Fallon show. When I tell you. I've never seen a performance so bland and boring. So Jimmy Fallon just had a, he had a sign and he basically had the song names of whatever TikTok dance he wanted her to do. So she would turn around and do the TikTok dance. And it was just, at the end, it lacked pizzazz. It lacked literally everything. And Here's Twitter again, and just annoyed. And I was annoyed too, because if you're gonna do the dances, if you're gonna steal the people's dances, like at least do them with some energy, do something. Like she just looked like, uh, I felt like I was watching Bring It On. I know you guys have seen Bring It On. It's a movie in your life. You have girls, the girls and boys who work their, their, their asses off to create something. And then the the mayonnaise comes and steals it, and now they're on Jimmy Fallon, probably making six figures just for that appearance alone. So again, Twitter came on. I called the dance, I called the whole performance unseasoned. And Jimmy Fallon fo started following me after that. So I don't know what that means. Follows a lot of people, but I call I called the whole performance very unseasoned. And then that resulted in getting a follow from the Jimmy Fallon show. So um, I'm not really sure <laughs> what that means moving forward, but I'm very, very disappointed because Addison be like doing her thing on TikTok sometimes. I'm gonna give her her, I'm gonna give her her props, but that performance was an abomination. I was so disappointed and I just was like, just if you're gonna make them do the dances, just bring the creators of the dances. I could tell you the creators of at least half of those dances are like black girls. They deserve to be on Jimmy Fallon too. So that really upset me. And it shouldn't because it's freaking TikTok and who freaking cares about TikTok. But those those girls are making so much money just copying other people's dances. It's unbelievable. All right, moving, moving on to the next. I'm kind of I'm kind of in about this topic because it does not sit right in my spirit. It doesn't, it doesn't sit right in my spirit at all. So Lil Nas X released a, a music video that I did not watch because I only saw clips on Twitter and it made my entire soul cry. So I'm not gonna explain to you what, it, what he was doing in the video, 
just know it was it was a mess. So, you know, I'm gonna tell you anyway, because I don't want y'all to watch that and have to fully in your eyeballs. So basically what he's doing is he's like Satan and it's like a sugar pole going to like hell. And he's like dancing on Satan and all this extra stuff. So Lil Nas X has always been a little different out of the box, but I feel like he's gone a little too far with this. And I've never judged him for being who he was. I've actually applauded him for it, but I'm not really sure what the end game with this route he's going. So if the video wasn't bad enough, he also released some shoes and name them the Satan shoes. So these Satan shoes are Air Max 97s are 666 pairs made. They are black and red and then they have like kind of like a liquidy thing at the bottom. So they have red um, dye and then also one drop of human blood. Like Huh? Oh, by the way, they're also being sold for over a thousand dollars. So oh, the internet blew up. Like they always do. Like Lil Nas, what are you what? Like people don't people don't fear the Lord enough for me and it's showing and, and he's not the only person that it shows with, but it's like society has completely lost their freaking minds. So we're all looking at Nike like, girl. What is you doing? <laughs> Nike, like, can y'all say something, please? So apparently, Nike covered the state saying, we have no idea what this is. We don't have anything to do with this. And now they are suing the company. Um, the letters are M-S-C-H-F, I think, which I think is like short for mischief. That's just what I'm assuming. I'm not sure but they are uh, suing them, as they should, because Nike now looks like um, Satan worshipers, and they absolutely are not. And I think Lil Nas X has lost his mind, and he recently tweeted that um, now that he's getting like anxiety from the backlash, and I'm just like, what did you expect? Like, what did you expect? Like, you released a Satan video along with Satan shoes. What did you think the people were gonna say? Like, girl, <laughs> I don't know how many people that idea went past, but y'all all should be fired and all y'all need to go to church because what? I am confused. All right, last thing I'm gonna say about pop culture is I saw a, um, I saw a list on Twitter and it was the most handsome bald men in the world. And I don't don't ask me how I came across this list. I just did. And the number one person was Prince William. Did I say handsome? I meant sexiest. The list was sexiest. So Prince William was number one. And I am confused. So apparently this list came out because Somebody researched how many times this, the people were mentioned and accompanied with sexy in various online blogs and articles. But I'm upset that Prince William is number one because if any of y'all have seen Prince William, you would like, huh? But the, the rest of the list is even funnier. So I'm gonna tell y'all the rest of the, the top 10, okay? So we have Prince William, Mike Tyson, Jason Statham, Pitbull, <laughs> Michael Jordan, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, John Travolta, <laughs> Bruce Willis, <laughs> The Rock and Vin Diesel are nine and 10. Okay, first of all, The Rock and Vin Diesel should be one and two, if we're being honest. I don't know. I feel like this list was completely made up and very much biased to anybody over 35 years old and I, <laughs> like, Tyrese, Morris Chestnut, hello? Are y'all kidding me? This list was so disappointing. 
I'm 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 perplexed. But the list did come from 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 Europe, from England. I don't know if that makes a difference because it is the World Wide Web. So you know, I know a lot of people can get that, but I'm just I don't even know why that list was even made. So, all right, that's all I got for <laughs> pop culture, y'all. So now, best part of the of the podcast, we're gonna talk hoops. We're gonna talk basketball. First and foremost, most most importantly, we're gonna talk about the women's tournament. We're gonna talk about the women's tournament. Y'all have so much to talk. I don't even know where to start. Let's start with the final four. UConn, Arizona. Surprise. Hey, I love that for Arizona. I love that for them. South Carolina, Stanford. Um, fun fact about the Final Four, it is the first time two black female head coaches are meeting in the Final Four. So that is exciting for black people and black women. So I'm very, very, very excited and happy about that. Also, two former WNBA players. We're going to bring in our first guest. This man runs his mouth a lot on Twitter. So, of course, he's into the show. He's a, he's a messy one, y'all. <laughs> What's happening, so, bro? What's popping, dog? How you doing? Hey. All right, we talking uh women's college tournament. What right, it, a, first of all, first who's winning the winning the final four? Can I okay, I, I'm gonna say who I wanna win and then who's gonna win. I want South Carolina to win. However, okay. I'm I UConn is winning this whole thing. And it hurts me to say that. It pains me to say that, but that's what's gonna happen. I mean, that, why does it pain? It why does it pain you? Why does it pain you to root for greatness? Um, you know, because I'm trying to root for black greatness. You know what I mean? I'm trying to root for for Don. And <laughs> you kind of the opposite of that right now. So you feel me? So you know what I mean? But Paige is a bucket. So like that's just what it is. And that's she gonna that's change the, her last name to buckets by the end of her college career. That's the conundrum I'm facing, Lex. That's the conundrum I'm facing. The last right now. name is going to be buckets by the end of the season. It's already buckets. It's already buckets in my mind right now. You feel me? Yeah. I'm already. I'm locked in. Okay, but, okay. So let's talk about the most exciting game of the weekend. Um, that Baylor UConn matchup. Mm. First of I'm all, a- committee, if you can hear me, don't do that again. Don't put the best two teams in college in the same region. I don't I got, care what the says. Be smart. Be smart. I got a low key hot take. Okay, let's. That wasn't a foul. I'm gonna just say it wasn't a foul. It was not a foul. I'm sorry. It just wasn't a foul. Um, that was not a foul. We watched a lot of basketball. You played a lot of professional basketball. When the game is on the line, Lex, do they call that foul? Uh, you damn near have to tackle somebody for them to call a foul. Or you got to be like, like that. Or you got to be like the goat. Or you got to be Mike. You know what I mean? And or you got to be, or you got to be DT, or you got to be Candace Parker, or you got to be Maya Moore, or you got to be Lex be Brown. Paid. You feel me? Oh, or you gotta be page. <laughs> or you gotta be page. But short of getting tackled, they're not calling a foul right there. So when the foul. What's the foul? I I'm gonna have to fight you there. That was 100 percent a foul. I don't I'm glad they didn't call it. It was a foul. But like it's a foul in the second you quarter. Can't, you, can't end, I don't know, you can't end a game like that. I'm sorry. But now that we're on the topic of fouls. Let's talk about these refs that we've had uh, this whole tournament. Okay. Like, I don't – did they – Are they are they good? I don't know. They probably Refs are them. never good, though. Refs are never good. They've been, like, extremely horrible. Lex, Lex Bubble, have you ever had a ref that you just was like, yo, this is a great ref. This is somebody that, never. like, I rock with. Have you never. ever rocked with a ref? Never. Exactly. So all refs are trash because, like, Inherently, they're just trash because you're never going to agree with them fully. A player is never going to agree with a, a rep fully on anything. Neither is a coach. But I will say, Texas A&M must have had something going on with him. Because two games in a row. They just wasn't it. You feel me? They just wasn't. They wasn't doing. They wasn't, you know, they wasn't chosen. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I'm like, Texas A&M, y'all going y'all gonna go skate through the, the two games, and then I don't know what happened to them. Uh, who your favorite team so far in the, in the tournament right now? Who who is who is like you know? There's the best team in the league or the best team in the country, and then there's just your personal favorite that you just rock with on, on your do they, who is, be, your favorite do they have to still be playing right now? No, not not at all. Um, my favorite team was. It pains me to say this. My favorite team was Maryland. Right. Yeah. Ugh. They just well, they, the way they scored the ball. Mm. And I just remember being on on that team with Brenda under Brenda and like she just scored the ball. So mm. I while well, I was in college, I didn't ever want them to win anything, obviously. But now that I'm out of college, like I would have loved for them to get over that hump and get back to a final four. Because they haven't mm. been back since the last time. We win. Oh, oh, I feel like that, that's a little bit of a flex right there. That's a little bit yeah. of like a, you know what I mean? They, they ain't done nothing since I left. Since they like Brown left. You feel yeah. me? Like, <laughs> they've been so close and they've been so good every year. They're so good. So, so, so I really want to saying they need to bring you on staff so they can go back to the final four is basically what you Absolutely think. not. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. But I really thought this was going to be their year to get to the to the final four, and I don't know. I don't know how they lost to that team. I think just Texas outplayed them. They have more heart, I think, towards the end. It's just it's so funny. Yo, to Collier see. on Texas is fire, though. You know what I mean? Collier is on yeah. Texas is fire. So I mean, hmm. and she's intimidating as hell. She's big as hell. So it's like I just don't know what their deal is. They like. They can't get over the hump. And I want them to so bad because I think they have so many really, really good players. And of course, Brenda is a really good um, So, yeah, do you have any more? I was going to talk about the Paige and Kaylin matchup, but I feel like so many other amazing things happened since then. Okay. I know um, how you feel about that game. You want to share game? how you feel? Which game? Which game? The Iowa UConn game. All right, yeah, yeah. Let me. All right, let me. Let me. You feel me? Hold on. Hold on I'm on, adjusting bro. his hat. Me, hold on, girl. Let me see. Hold on, man. I just think honestly, let me keep it a stack with you. I just think from the beginning, and we texted during this game, so you already know my feelings. I feel like UConn was just way just out coached Iowa in general. Paige got better looks. You know, she everybody. Like, you got to, like, put that to the side. That's what I'm, I'm saying, though, but, like, it's everybody. sometimes it's just hard for me to, like, it's hard for me to gauge sometimes when a player is just really great in the system versus they're just really, really great. And, um, you know, I'm just doing the sports thing. Like, Paige is the GOAT, right? But I'm just doing the sports thing where you just invalidate people just so you can get another <laughs> argument. That's what I'm doing right now. And messy. I told y'all he's messy. Messy. Kayla, Kayla's shot was just broke. And I can't help but think if it would, if she was on UConn, if her shot would be as broke because she would have gotten better looks. I just, or uh, I wish Gino, if Gino was her coach, Gino would have told her to just go to the rack because she was shooting and her shot was just broker and broker and broker. <laughs> <laughs> as the game wore on. And I felt like with better coaching, Lex, that she would have just went to the cup because she should have. I miss, I was texting you, bro. Please go to the cup. Go to the cup. Stop shooting. Go get a free throw, feet. sis. Go get you a free throw. Get your go rhythm. Get, you re- get your rhythm back. She's over here shooting from half court, like, oh, for, like, nine. And I'm like, dude, please just go to the cup, get a couple free throws, get your rhythm in, sis, and then go ahead. But, like... <laughs> But no. But I will say UConn turn into the the freaking Power Rangers, the Avengers, the Justice League. They All say, oh, y'all not y'all not gonna just talk about one player. Y'all y'all not gonna forget about us. Kristen uh, Williams is that. Also, you want to say this? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My Kristen f- Williams is my favorite player in the tournament. You saw our mutual friend Kayla Johnson was over, put the video out of her doing the Kurt Franklin. She is my favorite player. I wish she was on another team because that means I have to root for UConn even more. But I'm just going to say she is my favorite player in college basketball right now. I am going to follow her on TikTok. She has legendary content. She is going to she be a star. I'm booking it. Won, she won quarantine TikTok time. 
Yeah. Speaking Shout of TikTok, that's all they be doing now. I'm like, how mm. do y'all have time to make all these damn videos? They ain't got no time to do anything else. You already know what the bubble life is. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. Yeah. I'm like, don't y'all got class still? Like, what are y'all doing? It's like, ain't it spring break or something? I don't know. They wild I somewhere. Know. In spring. This I don't is know. Very, this is a very, very entertaining group of college basketball players, and I'm here for all of it. Word. All Word. of it. I love it all. All right, Logan. Thanks for all messing right, with me. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Peace. Of course. All right, we're going to move on to a little bit of NBA talk, right, Coach? That's what you want to talk about? Yeah, how you doing? Good job. You're doing a good job, by the way. Thank you. Okay, we're going to talk. We just want to talk trade deadline stuff because that's what I got, you know, written down. But, you know, whatever you want to talk about, I'm here. I'm here to listen and talk with you. All right, so everybody's, like, kind of, like, big on the nets right now. Let me just ask your yeah. opinion. What what you think that they had a so called uh, super team right now? Oh my gosh! You literally you my put in my notes. Okay, we gonna talk about super teams. Okay, I I think that they are a really good team. Huh. Super team might be a stretch. I agree, yeah. and I'm I definitely agree. I mean, we gotta pump the brakes on the Knicks. I mean, here's the deal: you got KD that's missed a quarter over a quarter of a season. You still have Kyrie, who's I'm not gonna say injury prone, but we have to make sure he's healthy throughout the whole year. Um, now, my quote unquote MVP is James Harden. He he may be the the player that may I mean he may win MVP, and he didn't even play for the Rockets this year. I mean, you seen what happened with that team once he left. You know, sometimes you don't know how good you are until you leave. You know where you were, and so we definitely uh, see. You know how you know great he was, but you got to look at Steve Nash as the coach. I mean, he's a first year coach. He's never this is his first year coaching. Uh, and then we got to talk about chemistry. You know, you got Blake Griffin coming over from the Pistons, and you got uh, Lamarcus Aldridge coming over for the Spurs. This team hasn't been together for a long time, and so I know you play. I play basketball. Uh, you play basketball. We all know that chemistry uh, plays a role in uh, how great of a team he is. Uh, me personally. Um, you got to get his team a little bit more time before we consider them just a great team. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the way they play, you know, they live and die with the three. I think that's how everybody plays right now, too. But like I said, it's the carry. I think people are throwing around the word, the term super team too loosely. Like you have like a good team. You got a super team. And even like when Golden State went on that run, like, they were not a they were not a super team. They were just a very well put together team with two superstars and Steph and Clay. Steph just finally got healthy, and then they, he just put really really good role players around them, and they became a super team when KD came, which I think they still would have won whether KD came or not. But I want to consider the, the super team only because, like you said, the injuries. The dra- like I wouldn't even call it drama, but like you know, sometimes guys play, sometimes they're not playing. Now you got Blake and Lamarcus, and I mean, yeah, that's exciting. I'm glad that they you know got out of situations they didn't want to be in. But I'm like, why are y'all so excited for Blake Griffin and Lamarcus? <laughs> like I don't, no. I don't understand. But again, it's size, and everyone is like, oh, they're just doing this because everyone wants to be, everyone wants to be Bron, everyone wants to be Bron. I'm like. Well, Braun might not even make it out of the West. So I, is, is everyone trying to be Braun? Because I mean, this is a and, little tough. And that's the thing. Now, speaking of the West, Lexi, uh, now I'm I'm a Laker fan. I grew up a Kobe fan. So I am a Laker fan. Now, I do want my Lakers to win it all. But I have to say, you got a sleeping giant over there, and that's the LA Clippers. Yeah. Everybody made fun of Paul George last year when he was shooting uh, shots uh, off the side of the off, basket, off the side of the backboard. <laughs> but let me, the <laughs> let me tell you something, and I've seen a lot of basketball. They're very, very motivated right now. They yeah. just brought in Ty Lu. Ty Lu is a veteran coach. I mean, Ty Lu. A lot of people don't know this. Ty Lu has been coaching for for a very long time. He was on that Doc Rivers staff when uh, the Boston Celtics won. Um, now I do see this a lot when they get rid of a coach and bring in a new coach. Sometimes it turns out pretty well, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's going to be one of the cases this year with the Clippers. 
Um, Kawhi still Kawhi. Kawhi just uh, won a title with Toronto um, lower a year ago. Uh, I mean, they did lose Montrez Harrell, but they still have a lot of pieces where they can uh, get this thing done. My only concern with my Lakers is you got AD, uh, Anthony Davis, he's been hurt, and Bron, uncharacteristically, um, is injured right now. Um, and, you know, that's that's going to play a big part in the playoffs. I mean, you, I've never seen a championship team um, throughout the course of the season just miss so much time throughout the regular season and then make a big run in the playoffs. So that's the only thing that scared me. Yeah. I think playoffs are going to be fun, especially with the, um, the playing part, which – I don't really love that, and I know I'm sure the guys don't really love that. Obviously, the guys who want to be in the playoffs, um, who you, you know otherwise wouldn't have a chance like it. Um, but I mean, obviously, I think this at this point, everything that the NBA does is a money grab. So, um, do you know why they came over to play in last year? And we only talking about last year. Well, you uh, had you last year they did it because wasn't it because like just the way the season just was cut off, and they just wanted it to be a more balanced thing, right? Well, that's the that's the technically correct answer, but the real reason why because they really wanted Zion in the playoffs. Oh they yeah, gave, yeah, yeah. Which, they gave him now he he was like they gave him all like the, chances in the world to get. <laughs> yeah, he was like the ninth or tenth seeds at the time, and they really wanted to make a push. Yeah, to, to get Zion on TV. Yeah, like I said, I, at, at the end of the day, everything in the NBA and in professional sports is about money. Um, so. We going to see how our Lakers – why did I say our? I don't like the Lakers. I'm you you said it right. You, you did say it right. No, I don't. I don't like the Lakers. I do enjoy watching LeBron James play basketball. But I am not a Lakers fan. Just making that clear to everybody. Um, thank you so much, Coach, for coming and I want, on. And I want to I wish you the best in the upcoming uh, WNBA season, and I will be watching. Hopefully they have you all's team on as, as many uh, broadcasts as possible. So I, I wish so. you the best. Thank you so much. All right, next we got Pavy coming on. You got some news for us, Pavy? You got breaking news? I got breaking news. What's the what's the what's the breaking news I'm supposed to have? About the Clippers? Oh, oh, Boogie, Boogie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I woke up and apparently the Clippers signed Boogie. I thought it was a 10 day, but I guess he got like an actual contract. So I guess Boogie is. Who don't know who Boogie is? That would be Demarcus Cousins. Demarcus Cousins. Demarcus Cousins is the newest member of the Los Angeles Clippers. Oh no! You said oh no. Why did you <laughs> <say>, oh no? <laughs> why is why is oh no the reaction to Boogie joining the Clippers, Lexi? Well, because we was just talking about how they a sleeping giant and how how he wanted the uh, Lakers to win it all, but I mean the thing with the Lakers, man, is like. I everybody is so convinced we get Lakers next finals. I actually do not think we get. I don't Lakers think that finals. either. I said that yesterday. I don't. I think I'm people are like, ignoring all the other good teams that are playing great basketball right now. I think right now, if the playoffs started today, I think they playing the Nuggets. I think. Well, let me actually look. I don't just want to say it. Let me actually look real quick. I think if the playoffs start right now, they playing the Nuggets. You do not want to play the Nuggets in the first round, especially when two of your stars are hurt. Even in the bubble last year, one I think is easily beat the Nuggets. Like, it went five, but one game, like, they went on a buzzer beater. That could have easily been six. And if again, if it goes six games, who's stopping it from going to seven? Right, right. now, they would be – yeah, they, they would be playing Denver in the uh, first round. And if they move up, it's Portland in the first round. And the Lakers, I don't think they're going to win enough games to be top two or three. I think they're probably going to be between four to six. And any of those teams, like, it doesn't get easy. And then in the, then in the East, I'm just not convinced with the Nets. Also, they got injury concerns. KD been out for two months, bro. Like, and then, got, and then if he does come back, you got to acclimate him back to how they've been playing. And then they got all these new players. And yeah. they still don't have nobody that just say, I want to guard somebody. Everybody want to score. Right. So, yeah, yeah. but yes, Boogie Lakers to the Clippers. Nets. Lakers, Nets. I'm not. That's not the finals that I am predicting. I don't What's really it? know. I don't know. What's I mean, I would prediction? like. I would like the Heat to get back to the finals. <laughs> that could happen too. That could I would happen love too. To get back to the finals because I I don't like that everybody thought it was a fluke, and I think that they have really, they have a really solid team. They're just very much like this, but they just got Victor Oladipo, which that makes a huge difference for them. Um, you also got uh, Bielisa who can yeah. shoot, stretch the floor. Yeah. Um, they got a very solid team. 
Uh, Philly is good, but like I've just, and I think Joel Embiid is a great player. I just, I've just never been a, oh my God, Joel Embiid, like I want him to win all the championships. I've just never felt that way about him. I feel same, with, same with Ben Simmons. They're just so, they're very boring to me. Yeah, I don't really watch. Okay, so what is Lexi Brown's favorite league pass teams? Uh, my favorite league pass teams are Portland, obviously. Right. There's a dame. Um, who else do I like to watch? I like to watch, well, I used to like to watch Charlotte because of, I liked watching Melo play. Mello. Um, but now that's over. So I don't really watch them <laughs> anymore. Um, and then I watch um, the Timberwolves sometimes because I really just want them to win. I feel you. I feel like Minnesota. Our, our brother team. So I just like hope to see them catch them on a, on a good day. Slight off subject. What do you think about are those like y'all New Jersey's that you posted the other day? Uh, allegedly. Allegedly those y'all New Jersey's? Allegedly. Yeah. I feel like they look like the T Wool jerseys in the early 2010s. Yeah. I like I like the Minnesota. I mean, I'm not even gonna complain because I'm just glad they got freaking Mayo Clinic off, off the, the jerseys. Of their damn shirts. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so ugly. Shout out to our sponsor, Mayo Clinic. Shout out Mayo Clinic. We love you. Love that. You're great, but we don't want y'all to people to think that the the team name is Mayo Clinic. They did have very, very huge uh like huge. Wasn't it Um, just as big as y'all team logo? Almost bigger. That's insane. Yeah. So I've seen, I saw the ones I posted on Twitter. Um, Dierica Hamby, who plays for Vegas, she sent me a picture of theirs. Theirs are fire. Um, obviously, it's a secret, or else I'm sure she would have posted them. But theirs are fire. Mm-hmm. Um, bringing white jerseys back, which yeah, I'll bring a white jersey back. Took them away. Like, why would you take away home jerseys? Like, I don't know. I've never understood that. But I'm excited. Dallas has the ugliest jerseys I've ever seen. I haven't. Wait, you talking about the ones now? With the red note. Did you see them? They're like they're I didn't, like no, no, no. I didn't. The like only jerseys I've green. seen. They're like army green. green and it has like a big red star in the middle. It looks like a World War II plane. You said you, you said they got the uh the uh the uh the, the Tuskegee Airmen joints on. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> That's the Tuskegee Airmen joints. Blow up green with a big red star and they look like planes. And I'm like, I hope that at least. I mean, I let me take that back. It's like more of like an army. Oh yeah, it's literally an army green, which I love that color, but the red star kind of threw me off. Like I said, I just hope that the Sparks give it the purple jerseys. I hate those jerseys. The purple Sparks jerseys. Those either. The the yellow classic, keep them. And if they want to do a white and a black edition, incredible. But the purple jerseys, I just was never a fan of the Sparks purple jerseys ever. Like I used to not like when they wore those jerseys at all. They're just so like bland. That and bland, like they're not. Yeah. No, it's not fire. Everybody's like, I don't know. I just hope the WNBA realizes if they if they make us more like nice jerseys that are cute, then more people are gonna buy them. No one wants to buy a jersey that says Mayo Clinic on it. Yeah. Like, so hopefully, uh, like that's their mentality. But the fact that they've been they were accidentally released in in stores is weird to me. But they were accidentally released in stores. Yeah, that's how people saw them. Wow, they're in dicks. So people were like sending pictures to Twitter, like, "Oh, our dicks has the jerseys. Our dicks has the jerseys." Well, the first problem was um, DC had theirs, and they put a hyphen after in um, Elena Deladon's last name, and she does not have a hyphen in her name between Della and Don. It's one, it's one last name. Yeah, how how would you get that wrong? The same way you accidentally put out exclusive unreleased jerseys in multiple. Oh, wait. I was in Vegas this weekend, which is a lawless land. That that is nasty activity going on in Vegas right now. <laughs> but I was in Vegas and I was at the Bellagio and like I was like walk past like the like sports store. They didn't have no spark that not sparks. They didn't have no ace and stuff in there. Like they had the Golden Knights, who I guess is that's the hockey team, I guess. Yeah. They had the Golden Knights, they had Raiders, obviously. But they ain't had no, I'm like, bro, how y'all got a whole other team? How they ain't got no, and someone Vegas got some of the coolest, like, color, like colorways and jerseys and leave. Someone said a jersey wall from Atlanta, and it was, like, up the whole wall, and, like, four rows was just Trey Young jerseys. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's crazy. And Cam Reddish jerseys. 
And I'm like, they don't, they don't even want Cam Reddish no more. Buy they do not want Cam Reddish no more. They, Buy they. A jersey. Put up a, uh, Inge- oh no, Angel's in Vegas now. Put up a Tiffany Angel. Put up a <laughs> Williams jersey. Literally, anybody. Not the four rows of Trey Young jerseys. They could do Courtney Williams. They could do, is Kalani still in Kalani's Atlanta? there. Odyssey. Like, there's so many. Their jerseys can be tough, too. Their color scheme has a lot of potential. Yeah, it's uh red and blue, right? It's red. No, it's like red and gray and black now. And okay. yeah, a little bit of blue. It's like okay. accent blue. But That's like, interesting. They have potential. But so That's far, the ones I've seen, Vegas definitely has the coldest. But I haven't seen all of ours yet. But my teammates said that they're nice, too. So I take your teammates' word for them. I mean, look, the Minnesota jerseys from the early 2010s. Well, Minnesota, the T-Wolves always have cool jerseys and I feel like y'all kind of like follow like their whole so like y'all jerseys are always cool I, I never looked at y'all jerseys like they were like nah y'all jerseys was always cool but also it could be because y'all one of the most iconic franchises in the league which like kind of make y'all jerseys you know yeah kinda iconic. Kennedy Carter they could do Kennedy Carter jerseys oh yeah actually that's who they need to put out Kennedy Carter yes she was balling last year until she sprained her ankle right yeah yeah she was hooping she was so, hooping yeah all right thanks Pappy for coming breaking that news of course, man. Anytime, anytime, anytime. Appreciate you. All right, y'all. So that wraps it up for today. I hope you guys had fun. Thank you for watching. If you want to hear this podcast, just audio search. Just call me today on your favorite streaming platform. It will be available everywhere. I will see y'all next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I love y'all. Peace.